Welcome to one of Canada's remote outposts, a mission church in Toledo Northwest Territories. It's not what most picture when they think of missions, but Pentecostal Subarctic Mission Coordinator Gary Foote says there are churches like this throughout the North where pastors have given up everything to serve their communities. You know, the culture is different, the language is different. Uh, a place like this, it's only fly in or by boat. Um, there's, only, there's only road access for about two months, three months, sometimes in the winter. So it's pretty isolated. It's a, it's a mission, you know, it's a mission station. And the missionaries pretty well have to come up with a lot of their own support. He's here this week in Toledo to help two such pastors, Lynn and Sharon Berger, missionaries who have served this community for more than 12 years. But when Lynn and Sharon came here, there was two people in the church. And uh, now, normal services, they have 30 to 40. I've been here when there's been 60 people in the church. Right now, this week, everybody's out because school's out and everybody's traveling. So there's hardly anybody in the whole community, as you can see around. There's not very many people around. But uh, yeah, they, they've really grown, they've really changed. It, Lynn pours his whole heart and soul into the people here. He really does. You, whenever you come here, you'll see people, whoever, sitting around their table having supper. When They never have a family supper. There's always two or three or four or five different people running around here. It's a difficult life. Far from medical care, hardware stores, Christian events and malls, the burgers say they've had to face the challenges that everyone does in the north, intense isolation and the high cost of living. Our kids not seeing their, uh, their grandmas as often, you know, seeing your relatives, your friends from down south, um, the price of stuff here. We really live by faith up here, by God touching people down south. Um, you talked earlier with Gary or about what our base salary is. It, it's, you know, when a, a watermelon, a whole watermelon this size is $45. You know what I mean? Uh, a jug of milk is, uh, at the best of time, is $13 for two months in the spring and two months in the fall, it goes up to $19. And that, um, for a jug of milk, you know, um, it, it, it's expensive. You went to the Northern Star, you saw some of the prices there. Mm -hmm. um, Shocking. Uh, peer pressure, not really. But their sacrifice there has produced beautiful fruit. Carlos was curious to find out why well, Christians seem so happy. Like, After reading a book uh, about no, it, he asked Lynn awesome. to pray with him. It's like a very warm feeling. It's like, wow, my chest is feeling warm. This. It's, just, it's like I've always had a cold feeling down my spine all over and all of a sudden this warm feeling came over me and just I couldn't help but cry. Wow. It was so awesome. A year later, he says his entire outlook on life has changed. Uh, God has helped me realize the things that I can do, like what I'm capable of and how much he can change my life. I mean, I've changed so much since last year. I was more, I guess you could say grumpier. Now I'm more happier and joyful and I just seem to be going for more things such as my schooling, uh, more jobs and I've been even recently thinking about careers and I guess you could say it's been helping me in life. Lynn says it's stories like these that make the sacrifices worth it and he says despite the challenges they've seen their needs met in ways they couldn't have imagined. I gotta be the most blessed man in the whole world. I, I, I'm telling you the honest truth. I'm not just saying that. Um, as I told you before, I got a wife that loves me, a, a God that has forgiven me, three wonderful girls. God just blessing me with those things. Like, like to travel here, you, we don't have a road system. It's the river system. God provided us with a boat. He provided us with snow machines to go get the moose and the wood in the wintertime. Airfare for our family, we're going to pass this camp. Uh, in about a week and a half from now, for our family to fly from Toledo to Edmonton and back, uh, we just phoned, it's just over $8,000. $8,000, if you're in Edmonton, you could fly all the way around the world just about. Lynn and Sharon are thriving in the north now, but 20 years ago, they couldn't have imagined themselves here. Sharon hated the snow and cold, and Lynn was doing everything he could to avoid being a pastor. The Lord just brought us to that place where we where we had to pray a very dangerous prayer, and <laughs> and that was like, you know, Lord, we'll go where you want us to go, and we'll do what you want us to do, and and just taking off all the, you know, the parameters of of, you know, sort of this is where we want to be, but just opening it up and saying, God, where is it that you want us to be? It wasn't too long after that that two people they hardly knew came up to them separately and told them God wanted them to pray for Fort Norman, 
which Talita was previously called. I didn't have a clue where Fort Norman was. I, I, it could have been, you know, on the other side of the planet for all I knew. I just didn't know anything about where it was or what it was. And, and, um, and so I was like, okay. And, and Lynn, he knew where it was and he was just sort of thinking, in his, in his heart, he was thinking, uh-uh, no way, like, I know my wife hates the cold, so, like, forget it, there's no way, because I know where that is, and it's way up north. And as we really started to pray about it, it was just, it was so incredible just how God just filled our hearts with this love for, for the people here that we had never met, that we, we didn't know, and it just grew and grew. A month later, when we went up to Fort Smith to, um, to visit the north, it was just like the minute we stepped off the plane, we knew that we knew that we knew in our heart that yes, this is where God wants us to go. Now, more than a decade later, Lynn and Sharon have no regrets about the decision that changed the course of their lives. And for those considering praying a dangerous prayer like theirs, they give this advice. Don't hesitate to go where God is calling you to go. Because as much as I, I don't like the cold or as much as I didn't ever think that this is where I would ever want to come or that I would ever want to live. Um, God has just put such an incredible love in my heart for the people, but also just for this place called the North. And if I would have stuck to those, stuck to those things and said, uh-uh, no way, I'm not going there because it's, you know, I don't like the cold and, and it's just way too far away from my family or it's too this or that or whatever, I would have missed so many of the most incredible blessings, so many of the most in incredible opportunities that God has, has given me and placed in my life and, and in our lives as a family. Not long after I visited the Burgers, they felt it was time for a new season in life and are now presently serving a church in Alberta. But the North hasn't left their hearts and now they're organizing mission teams to travel there twice a year. Gary Foote says communities and missionaries up here need that support and he asked those watching for one thing. Really like people to pray for us, really pray, because it is hard, you know, and it's hard on them, and, and it's lonely sometimes, and you wonder if anybody else in, in the district or in Alberta or wherever is praying for you, or if anybody even knows you're up here, and so if they make contact, people will send a book up or they'll write them a letter or emails, uh, lots of phone calls. Uh, people will send a box of chocolates or something. And that's a big, that's a, a really exciting thing to get. You know, you go to the post office, you've got a parcel, you know, and you realize, hey, somebody's praying for me. Somebody's covering me with that, with that prayer. So that's probably the biggest thing that, that most of them lack. If you're interested in reaching out to these remote communities or supporting them through prayer, check out the Pentecostal Subarctic Mission website at psamnwt.com or go to our website for more information. In Toledo, Northwest Territories, Cheryl Weber, 100 Huntley Street.